Hi everyone. In this lecture, I'll start with the analysis of first order RL circuits. Uh, but before that, I thought I'll just quickly analyze uh, inductor circuits for different voltage and current inputs. What will be the if, if I give a voltage input, what will be the current in the inductor? And if I give a current input, what will be the voltage developed across the two terminals of the inductor? So first I'll start with voltage as an input and we'll see what will be the current waveforms for different input voltage waveforms. So first I'll start with the standard function which is an impulse function. So if I apply an impulse of voltage that is you are suddenly applying an impulse of voltage across the two terminals of an inductor then the current through the inductor is given by the integral of the voltage. Assuming the initial current in the inductor was zero then there will be a step change in the current. So here again as I said if you are going to apply an impulse of voltage, the units of the impulse or the weight of the impulse has to be flux. So phi upon L will be the current that is set in the inductor. Now if you increase the value of the inductor or the, if you increase the value of the induct, uh, L or inductance here, then the value of the current set for the same impulse value or the weight of the impulse being same, the value of the current built or set in the inductor will be smaller. So if I here I am going to call the value of inductance as L dash, L dash is greater than L. So your current set will be lower. Now the next input is I am going to apply a step input, step voltage input to an inductor. Then the current in the inductor using the equation here assuming again the zero initial, zero initial current will be, it will be a ramp in, ramp output. And it is given by 1 by Vx upon L into T will be the current and the slope of this line will be Vx upon L. Okay. Now here again you can see if the inductance value is large then it will build current slowly. It will increase current, current will increase linearly but it will increase very very slowly. So it will have a slope, it will have a smaller slope as you increase the value of the inductance. Now the next case I am going to apply and uh, th this is again, uh, I am sorry, so this is the current waveform in an inductor when you apply a step voltage change across uh, between the two terminals of the inductor. Now I am going to apply a pulse input. So 0 Vx to T on. So now the inductor current is going to increase linearly as long as there is a constant voltage difference across it. It is going to increase linearly with the slope of Vx by L and when T equals T on, it is going to build a volta uh, in the current of value Vx by e L into T on and after that the voltage becomes 0. When the voltage becomes 0, the current has nothing to integrate anymore so it will remain constant. So here you can see even though there is no voltage across it, the current remains the same. So it, this is like inductor can be said to be as an element which can store current. Like capacitors store voltages, inductors can store currents. Okay. Again, we know that the energy is stored in the form of magnetic energy in inductors and in capacitors it is stored in electric, as electrical energy. Now, I am going to consider another kind of input which is, first we will have a step of value V1 at t equal to 0 and then at t equal to t on, some time t on, the step value is suddenly going to increase to V2 volts. Then, we are interested in what will be the waveform or the shape of the current current waveform in the inductor. So first when the inductor suddenly sees a step change of V1 it is going to increase linearly with the slope of V1 by L and after T on the inductor current is suddenly going to increase with a different slope with a, in fact with a larger slope because the voltage is larger the slope of the current or the rate at which the current increases depends upon the magnitude of the voltage and the value of L it is simply V upon L. So here the slope will be V2 by L. Okay. So, it is going to be V2 by L into T. This equation is valid for T greater than T on. Okay. Before T less than T on or 0 less than T less than T on, it is going to be V1 by L into T. Okay. Now, So uh, I may have to, I mean uh, this, resu this result is fine but I think this result has a, we have to sli slightly modify it, I mean because you know it is, it can be written as V2 by L into T minus T on, okay. 
and this is true for t greater than t on plus you know there is a constant voltage which you have to accommodate for which here the voltage value will be v1 by l into t on so if you write the mathematical expression for t greater than t on it's going to be for t greater than t on v2 by l into t minus t on plus v1 into t on by l so this is the initial current after that suddenly when the voltage is changed from v1 minus v2 i mean it goes to v2 so then the slope also changes okay then uh, the, the 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 current is given by this expression okay so that at t equal to t on the current is simply v1 t on by l that has to be satisfied okay now i'm going to apply different current inputs and find the emf developed across the two terminals of the inductor so first i'll start with the step input now here i'm starting with the step input in, instead of an impulse because i have to show that the voltage across the inductor will be a derivative of an impulse so which will be little i mean it's it's mathematically simple but not very intuitive so that's why when i discuss pulse current inputs it will become clear as to how will the waveform look like okay so i'll first start with i'm going to now apply a current waveform to an inductor and see what will be the voltage developed between the two terminals okay so here first i'll assume a current of value it's going to step from 0 to i not and you are supposed to find the voltage so again voltage is l di by dt is the derivative of the current so the you are again we are going to have a step voltage step or, or sorry an impulse of voltage developed across the inductor and the value of impulse is given by l i not into delta of t so here again if you see l into i not is nothing but the unit is flux so it is phi into d, uh, delta of t so this will be the emf induced across the two terminals of the inductor so again we can see that it is uh, you know so for example when i apply an impulse i'm going to get a step current so therefore if i'm going to inject a force a step current into an inductor we are suddenly expecting the current in the inductor to build up to a value i not so there will be an impulse of emf induced between the two terminals now next i'm going to apply a ramp input so i not by t not into t so the slope is given by i not by t not i'm going to apply this across the inductor so when i apply this across the inductor the inductor voltage uh, again you should understand that the voltage across the inductor can change suddenly okay the voltage across the inductor can have instantaneous or sudden changes but not the current and for you to have a sudden change in the current you need to have an impulse of voltage across it okay so now uh, when i apply a ramp input to an inductor that is you are linearly trying to force a linearly increasing current into an inductor the emf induced in across that will be a constant okay so at this point initially it was there was zero current there was zero current here and suddenly at t equal to zero a current started appearing across the two terminals of the inductor and the voltage developed the emf induced or the voltage developed between the two terminals of the capacitor inductor will be l di by dt so that will be l i not by t not so that will be the voltage developed across the inductor now if i apply okay so this is for a ramp input now i'm going to apply uh, a pulse input so it goes from 0 to i not but it's the current exists only for t on seconds or t not seconds so we'll try to find what is the voltage developed across the inductor so now first at t equal to 0 the current in the inductor is suddenly increasing from 0 to i not so there will be an impulse of voltage across it and that's given by l i not okay flux phi into delta of t and after that the once the current is built uh, the inductor doesn't need any voltage across it uh, once the it's a step current so to maintain the current a uh, constant current it doesn't need any voltage across it but at t equal to t on whatever energy it has built or whatever current it has built at t equal to 0 has to be fully made i mean fully removed or because it has to go to zero at t equal to t on the current has to be uh, the current is made to go to zero so for that the inductor will develop a negative impulse of voltage because it already has some current so for that to go to for that to go to zero the voltage across the inductor will be become suddenly negative and it will remove uh, all that current instantly okay and again this will be minus li not into delta of t 
and in fact it's delta of t minus t, t, t on or t naught or let me call it t naught here so this is t naught uh, del of t minus t naught will be the voltage across the inductor okay now when you apply a ramp current a meaning a current of finite a waveform a waveform shape like this meaning it's increasing linearly at till t naught seconds okay and it reaches a value of i naught the slope of this line is i naught by t naught into t okay slope is i naught by t naught and it's going to decay down again up by a, by a slope i naught by t naught the slope here is again i naught by t naught and after 2 t naught seconds it's going to come to zero now what will be the voltage across the inductor so first of course you can derive this mathematically uh, we can very easily see that when for t greater than t for t greater than 0 uh, the slope of the current is increasing linearly so the voltage will be a constant and the voltage value is given by l i naught by t naught and at t equal to t naught what happens is that the direction of the current changes the slope of the current the voltage across the inductor depends upon the slope of the current not on the value of the current but i mean not on the absolute value of the current but rather the slope of the current okay so suddenly it will change from a positive value to negative value because the slope becomes negative for t greater than t naught here and that value here is minus l i naught by t naught okay and we can very easily see if i integrate this waveform i'm going to get this if i integrate the voltage i'll get the current okay 1 by l integral i dt oh sorry 1 by l integral v dt i'm going to get the current okay so that's all about analyzing inductor circuits for different current and uh, voltage waveforms so now i'll start with the analysis of simple first order rl circuits in this lecture so the points to remember is that the voltage 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 and current relationships is defined by this equation and in in the laplace domain vfs will be equal to sl into ifs the impedance of an inductance is sl Again, for an inductor, the impedance will increase linearly at t at, at uh, omega equal to zero or in the steady state when the current is not changing or the voltage is not changing, it will behave like an impedance of value zero. Okay, and then for sudden changes, the inductor will behave like an open circuit because the impedance of an inductor for omega equal to infinity, as I said, a sudden change is like an infinite frequency sinusoid. So the impedance of an inductance z of omega when omega tends to infinity will be infinity and at dc or in the steady state when omega tends to zero the impedance will tend to zero so this is the magnitude of the impedance and again you should know that with the voltage and current will be uh, orthogonal it meaning when i when i use the word orthogonal what it means is they'll have uh, 90 degrees they'll be 90 degrees out of phase okay so we can see v equals I'm going to use the frequency response analysis j omega l into ifs i okay so your voltage will always lead the current so or i can say uh, the current will always lag the voltage okay so here if you see uh, if your current has a phase angle of theta uh, okay so then this is going to add an extra pi by 2 so the voltage angle is going to be phi plus uh, i'm sorry the angle is phi phi plus pi by 2 so voltage will always lead the current so if your voltage waveform is like this then the current waveform should be in the opposite direction so i'm going to use a different current so this will be your current phasor and this is the voltage phasor okay so the current will always lag the voltage by 90 degrees or you can say voltage leads the current by 90 degrees for a capacitor it is opposite the current will lead the voltage for inductor a current will lag the voltage by 90 degrees so i'll start with a simple first order rl circuit which is a simple resistor and an inductor so for a first order rl circuit i'm going to apply an input vi here and i'm interested in finding the voltage v naught so we'll analyze the circuit in two ways first we'll analyze in frequency now that we have done both frequency and time time domain analysis so i thought we can do both of them simultaneously so before doing the frequency response analysis or the frequency domain analysis so we know we'll just have to replace the inductance by a value sl and derive the transfer function okay we can also 
I mean, very easily you can show the transfer function will turn out to be SL by R plus 1 plus SL by R. But I'm going to use a feedback. I've already discussed once how to use feedback. Uh, it's always very intuitive to look at it as a feedback circuit. So if this node voltage is V0, the input is VI. I can say the current in the circuit is given by VI minus V0 into 1 by R is the current flowing through the circuit. That current will now flow through an inductance of impedance SL and you get the voltage V0 and then it is fed back. You can see that the voltage is it's like a feedback system. So the forward path gain is SL by R and uh, feedback gain is 1, one A by 1 plus A beta so that's the uh, closed loop transfer function. So the forward path A is the forward path gain which is SL by R by 1 plus SL by R. Now we know this transfer function is nothing but a high pass filter. If I draw the frequency response of this filter it's simply going to be it's going to start at minus infinity in a logarithmic graph. I'm going to take 20 log of this and I mean I'll substitute s equal to j omega and then plot the magnitude. So it's going to start at a very low value in a, in a logarithmic graph and then it's going to increase linearly with a slope of 20 dB per decade and at omega equal to 1 by tau in this case as I, as I said in the previous lecture the tau is given by L by R the time constant is given by L upon R. Okay, so as I said, you should look at it very intuitively. A large inductance means it will take longer time to build the current. Okay, in this circuit, the value of the final current is fixed. I'll, I'll discuss when we give a step input. So larger inductance means it will take longer time to build that current. Okay, and similarly, a large value of R will imply a smaller current for a given voltage. The eventual current that you need to build in the circuit turns out to be smaller. Okay. So for a given L, a larger R will lead to a smaller time constant. Okay. Now, uh, here the pole, I mean the, the pole, the there is a zero at DC. Again, we'll discuss how to find them in the next lecture, but first I'll just uh, describe this transfer function. You have a zero at omega equal to zero, uh, a, a zero, and then a pole at one by time constant, which is R by L. Okay, this is again a left off plane pole. Now this is a high pass filter, it passes lower, higher frequencies and rejects lower frequencies. Now if you are asked to draw the step response of a simple RL circuit, what we will do is when I am applying an input of 0 to Vx, now we can see as I said instantly when you apply a sudden input from which is going from 0 to Vx, the inductor will behave like an open circuit. So at t equal to 0, the output voltage will be zero. Okay, I'm sorry. The output voltage will be like, will be equal to. I'm going to write V naught of zero will be equal to V i of zero zero plus. Okay, it's going to be V i itself because this will behave like an open circuit. So if this behaves like an open circuit, the entire voltage will the there will be zero there will be no current in the circuit. So therefore V i will be equal to V naught. Okay, so you will suddenly see a voltage of value input will appear exactly at the output of at the output and you will have a step change in the voltage from 0 to Vx. After that, then an, a current will start building in the inductor. Now as a current starts building in the inductor, there will be a finite voltage drop across the resistor. So when the voltage, when there is a voltage which develops across the resistor, the output voltage is going to reduce. Okay. Now eventually, the inductor current will keep on increasing and increasing when finally the inductor current, the final voltage, I mean the voltage across the inductor will keep on reducing. Okay, as long as it is positive, the inductor current will keep on increasing. So then finally, it will come to a point when the inductor voltage will become zero and the current of Vx by R will be set in the inductor and the voltage will go to zero. The time constant is given by L by R. So if I plot the current waveform, as I said, at T equal to zero, there is a sudden change in the voltage across the inductor. So the current will start from zero with a very high slope because the voltage across it is very high. Inductor value is fixed, so it depends upon the voltage and the inductance value. Okay. After that, it will slope will start reducing because the value of the voltage is also decreasing, decaying, and finally it will asymptotically reach a value of Vx upon R. Okay. Now again we can see here in the steady state the inductance impedance is going to be zero. In the steady state the inductor is going to behave like a short circuit. So the output voltage V0 of infinity 
is going to be equal to zero. Okay, the impedance is zero, so the voltage will across it will also be zero. And the current will be maximum. The current will maximum current value will be Vx by R in this circuit. Okay. So now I'm going to replace the inductor and the resistor. Now again, I'm going to apply a step input of. Um, so first, again, uh, we'll analyze both time and frequency. I'm going to apply a sudden step input, just to uh, analyze quickly in the frequency domain. We can see now the output voltage is V naught. So we can see that V i minus V naught by S L is the, actually the current flowing in the circuit. So I'll write one by S L, and that current flows into the resistor of value R, and you have an output voltage here. The output voltage is again fed back. So this will be the block diagram representation for this circuit. Now the transfer function would be R by SL by 1 plus R by SL. So this can be written as 1 by 1 plus SL by R. Okay. Now this is a first order low pass filter with a pole given by R by L. Or the time constant in the circuit is L by R. So if I give a again uh, I'll just give an intuitive explanation now. Uh, we can also, we already know that what happens when I give a step input to a first order low pass filter. So when I give a sudden step of voltage, voltage 0 to Vx, what happens is that the entire voltage will drop across the inductor because it will behave like an open circuit. And then the inductor will start building its current. Slowly the inductor will start building its current. Eventually, the inductor current will reach a value of Vx by R. Okay. Now, the voltage across the resistor is simply the inductor current multiplied, which is nothing but the resistor current as well, multiplied by the resistor value. So, you are going to get a voltage like this. Now, the time constant tau is given by L by R. Again, it is a first order circuit. So, for, to analyze any first order circuit, you just need to know three parameters. That is V0 of 0 v naught of infinity and the time constant so once you know these three parameters you can very easily draw the uh, i mean step response of any first order system or any time domain input for any given time domain input for like for example for especially for impulse and step inputs it's very easy to draw the output waveform okay so now when i give a step input for this input system it's going to be uh, an asymptotically reaching output which will eventually reach a value of Vx at t equal to infinity, but it, time constant is going to be L by R for this circuit. So I'll just finish this lecture by just quickly discussing about series and, induct and parallel inductors in parallel. So here again, uh, in all the analysis, at least for the next few lectures, I'll assume that if I have two inductors in the same circuit, those two inductors are assumed to be non-interacting, meaning normally, and that's not possible in practice. Okay, normally when I have two inductors in series. The flux induced in this inductor, okay, or the magnetic field generated by this inductor can couple to this inductor and also induce an EMF across the other inductor, okay. So that is called as mutual inductance, and uh, we will discuss that when we discuss about transformers in great detail. So, here in this lecture, I am going to assume that when I connect two inductors in series, those two inductors are non interacting, okay. So, meaning the flux or the current in this inductor is not going to induce an EMF across uh, induce EMF in the other inductor. Okay, so I'm I'm just going to use the word non-interacting. So if I have two non-interacting inductors and a current is flowing across it, the voltage developed you can simply find the individual voltages. Then the voltage developed between the overall uh, the two inductors is going to be sum of the two voltages. So in that you can show this can be a modeled as a single inductor of value L equivalent, which will be simply L1 plus L2. So if I just add n inductors in series the overall inductance is going to be, if I just add uh, n inductors, say L1, L2 till Ln, the equivalent inductance for this is going to be L1 plus L2 plus so on up till Ln. It is going to be sum of all the n inductors. Similarly, uh, when I am going to add inductors in parallel, when I am going to add inductors in parallel, the effective inductance is going to be, it is very much like a resistor. Okay, I can very easily show that 
you know the current is now going to get divided so by equating the currents we can very easily show 1 by L equivalent is going to be 1 by L1 plus so on till 1 by Ln okay so here we are as I said I use the word non-interacting inductors this is valid for inductors which are non-interacting but when you have interacting I mean when I say interacting the flux in one inductor can can induce an EMF in the other inductor so for that we will discuss it when I talk about transformers separately so I will stop the lecture at this point